Today, we are reacting to famous movie scenes of sales negotiation and training, kind of stuff like that. If you don't know who I am, my name is Gary Campbell. I own that thing and that thing. So if you are a sales rep and you want to make money and want to have a better sales job, you can go there. If you are a business owner and you want sales reps that don't suck, you can go there. Let's get into the video. We got Always Be Closing by Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I did another movie reaction to The Office and this one guy in the comments was like, hey, do this one. So we're doing it. And your name is your wanting and you can't play in the man's game. You can't close them. Then go home and tell your wife your troubles. Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. You hear me, you fucking fits? <laughs> Bro, this was my first sales job. <laughs> A, B, C. A, always B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. The whole always be closing thing, it's true. It says A, B, C. A lot of these older guys love their little acronyms and syllables and shit, but... Here's my thoughts on always be closing. I think it is true. It just depends on the context of it. So you shouldn't always be closing everyone you're speaking to always because you can't just close everyone with a pulse and a credit card. That's literally how you damage your reputation as a company. And that's abundantly important. I think you can always be closing on certain things that moves the sale forward, like micro commitments. If you are trying to get someone to use Facebook ads as a service for their pool builder company. You need to get them to commit, hey, Facebook ads is the best way to get clients. Hey, we don't know how to run Facebook ads, so we have to hire an agency. Hey, we need to work with someone as an agency. Hey, here's why we work with this agency instead of another agency, right? So if you're closing them on each micro commitment of closing them on why they should use Facebook ads, closing them on why they should not do it themselves. Close them on why they should hire an agency instead of hiring a, an in-house employee. That's good. You should always be closing on micro commitments, but to just always be closing everyone always all the time is a great way to destroy the reputation of a company. It's a great way to make sure clients don't get results. And it's a great way to like literally get banned by the FTC. <laughs> so it, it's good if you understand the nuance that makes it good. If you don't understand that nuance, and, and obviously in the context of what this guy was saying, he's saying close everyone with a goddamn pulse, which is not good. So that's my thoughts on ABC. A-I-D-A, attention, interest, decision, action. Attention, do I have your attention? Interest, are you interested? I know you are, because it's fuck or walk. You close or you hit the bricks. Decision. Have you made your decision for Christ? Company definitely got taken down by the FTC. Definitely got banned by Stripe. Guy don't walk on the lot lest he wants to buy. They're sitting out there waiting to give you their money. Are you gonna take it? Like I grew up to be Andy Elliott. That fucking loser. You're such a hero. You're so rich. How come you're coming down here and waste your time with such a bunch of bums? You see this watch? That watch costs more than your car. I made $970,000 last year. How much you make? That's cute. You see, pal? That's who I am, and you're nothing. Nice guy, I don't give a shit. This is like why people hate salespeople. Like, this guy's a fucking dickhead. Right now, there's a classic battle of sales manager, sales trainer versus this is probably like the top sales guy, has a really big ego. There's always like conflict between these two people in every company. Good father, fuck you, go home and play with your kids. You wanna work here, close. You think this is abuse? You think this is abuse, you cocksucker? You can't take this. How can you take the abuse you get on a sit? You don't like it, leave. I can go out there tonight. The materials you got make myself $15,000. Tonight, in two hours, can you? Sounds like a, there's a meeting, it's called the reset of standards meetings. You guys have been sucking and we're gonna make you not suck anymore. And if you're not cool with that, then you should probably leave now. Cause like things are changing. I I've had to do these meetings like three times and man, it sucks the air out of the room and people quit and a players stay. If you're about it, let's make a lot of fucking money. If you're not about it, like just leave. And we have people quit and it's kind of awesome <laughs> because it, it actually changes performance. Sounds like what's going on here. The guy's kind of an asshole, but like there's a lot of truth to what he's saying too. People get very into the weeds of everything that is not making money and sales is very binary. The deal with the clothes and the cash went through or it didn't. All these other metrics and all these other things and all we got so many appointments and all these other things, but it's like, 
if the cash didn't come through, the deal didn't close. And like that is objectively what matters. And I think he's just really getting them to focus on that point. Let me have your attention for a moment. Because you're talking about what? You're talking about bitching about that sale you shot. Some son of a bitch don't want to buy land. Somebody don't want what you're selling. Some broad you're trying to screw, so forth. Let's talk about something important. I think you can always tell when a sales team's in a slump when they only talk about the negatives. Like anytime I come in and, and help someone's sales team, if they're talking about a lead flow, oh, lead quality, oh, these, these leads are unqualified. No one has any money. Oh, I almost closed this one guy, but then I didn't and he got away from me. How do I send a follow-up? I could tell you, but you just gotta stop bitching and complaining. Focus on the controllables and like what's in your control and speak more positively. Because if you only think about the negative, like negative shit will happen. If you only think about the positive, positive stuff will happen. So I think he's kind of like head honcho running the show here, being like, you're bitching about all this stuff. Let's talk about something important. I, I like that kind of way to set the tone for a meeting. Well, I'm going anyway. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm fucking with you? I am not fucking with you. My first sales manager called me one time at noon. He was like, hey Garrett, quick question. Why the fuck is there not any cash that's came through the payment processor yet? I was like, I've not closed anyone yet today. He was like, Garrett, buy or die. <laughs> For the rest of the day, buy or die. It was crazy, but like I still kind of get that in the back of my head. If I've not, you know, I mean, I run my own business and stuff now, but if we've not closed the deal for a couple of days, I'm like, yo, talking to the sales team here, like, let's like get a little bit of urgency under us. Like, this, this guy reminds me so much of my first sales manager. I'm here from Mitch and Murray, and I'm here on a mission of mercy. Your name's Levine. You call yourself a salesman, you son of a bitch? I don't gotta listen to this shit. You certainly don't, pal. Because the good news is you're fired. The bad news is you've got all you've got just one week to regain your job, starting with tonight. Starting with tonight's sit. Oh, have I got your attention now? Good. Because we're adding a little something to this month's sales contest. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Incentives are one of the best ways to get salespeople to move. Some things I'll do is like literally as simple as like a DoorDash gift card. Like I just gave one of my sales guys like a hundred dollar DoorDash gift card. Do little stuff like that. You do like an a thousand dollar bonus. Like, hey, if we cross million dollars cash collected this month, I'll give all you guys like two thousand dollar bonus a piece right? If you do stuff like this, it will incentivize them to go hard. Obviously they want to make money as their sales reps. So just like close more deals, you make more money. But if there's another thing layered on top of that, it makes people go so hard because if there's one thing about salespeople, they are competitive as hell. So giving even more incentives on top of the money they make, awesome. Third prize is you fired. There's three sales reps. So they're looking around like, shit, one of us is going to go, one of us is going to have a sick ass car and Someone's getting knives, which is like better than getting fired, I guess. You get the picture? You laughing now? You got leads. Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. See what I mean? Low performing sales team, always bitching about the leads. Crazy. Fucking leads are weak, you're weak. I've been in this business 15 years. What's your name? Fuck you, that's my <laughs> name. You know why, mister? Because you drove off. There's like this never ending battle between marketing and sales. Marketing says the salespeople can't close. Salespeople say the leads suck for marketing. It's like a never ending battle. And it's like, I don't want to get all weird woo woo mindset, but like I will. If you think the leads suck, and you're selling something that like makes someone more money. And they say, man, like, you know, funds are like a little bit tight lately. I'm like, I wanna make more money. That person who says the leads suck, they'd be like, this guy doesn't have any money. 
The person who's like, dude, these leads are awesome. I'm going to close everyone. And that's their mindset going into things. And they hear, yeah, like, you know, funds have been a little bit tighter lately. And I'm just really on this path to like try to make as much money as I fucking can. They hear that and they're like, oh, this guy's driven. Like he'll, he'll become resourceful and, and find a way to make the, the payment go through. Right. So it's like the way that you think of the leads and that you, whether you're positive or you're negative about it, you'll hear the same thing. And one closer will get the deal to go through because of that reason. And one person will like disqualify a leader, not even give them the time of day or even try. And even when they price dropped, they're like, he's not going to buy. And then of course they don't close. So it's like, I would have fucking fired that guy immediately. <laughs> just, he's just, I mean, like the, the movie's kind of painting him as a sales rep that sucks and like, Sounds like he does. So we got a different movie here, Ben Affleck, Boiler Room. As you can tell, I've not seen this before. It's got 4 million views, so maybe I, I should watch this movie. Uh, let's see what they got. I'm sorry, man. This my seat. Shit, I, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. Get the fuck out of here. What? Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Just pick your ass up out of that Italian leather chair and get the fuck out of this room right now. Come on, let's go, Schlepprock. Out. We expect everyone here to treat their coworkers with a certain level of respect. Okay, before we get started, I have one question. Has anyone here passed a Series 7 exam? I have a Series 7 license. Good for you. You can get out, too. What? Why? Series seven. So they're selling like, uh, like stock related stuff and kind of like a uh, financial services. I know you got to get your series six, series seven for stuff like that. So it's probably like a stock market kind of type thing. We don't hire brokers here. We train new ones. That's it, Skippy. Pack your shit. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> He's too qualified. So he got fired. Here's the deal. I'm not here to waste your time. Okay. And I certainly hope you're not here to waste mine. So I'm going to keep this short. Become an employee of this firm. You will make your first million within three years. Okay? I'm gonna repeat that. You will make a million dollars within three years of your first day of employment at JT Marlin. There is no question as to whether or not you'll become a millionaire working here. The only question is how many times over. You think I'm joking? I am not joking. I am a millionaire. It's a weird thing to hear, right? I'll tell you, it's a weird thing to say. I am a fucking millionaire. I guess how old I am. 27. You know what that makes me here? A fucking senior citizen. This firm is entirely comprised of people your age, not mine. Lucky. He, he's humble, but he's got a little ego to him. I, I respect it. But what I do like is that he's actually talking with his team about how much money they want to make. I have one-on-ones with every single one of my team members, and I sit them down and be like, what are your actual financial goals? How much money do you want to make? Are you investing? You don't have to tell me, but like... If you're comfortable with it, how much money you actually have saved up and what you're planning on doing with it, how you manage your money, like expenses and shit. I think it's really important to talk with your team about because if you're helping them actually make large financial strides in like their career, they will stay longer and they'll be happier. And they know that like you're there to help them, which is dope. So I, I like that he's having this conversation because sales is a very money driven profession. And it's like, if you're not self-motivated to make money, then you got to make your fucking 10K a month and then give up. And it's a commission-based sales role. Like the company wants you to make a lot of money because then they make a lot of money and like, like incentives are aligned. So it's good to have this money talk. Lucky for me, I happen to be very fucking good at my job or I'd be out of one. You guys are the new blood. You're going to go home with the Kessif. You are the future big swinging dicks of this firm. Now y'all look money hungry and that's good. Anybody tells you money's the root of all evil, doesn't fucking have any. <laughs> they say money can't buy happiness, look at the fucking smile on my face. Ear to ear, baby. You want details? Fine. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids... Again, literally my first sales manager. Our, our onboarding call was him driving a Lambo and like on his phone in the Zoom meeting, like shifting gears and like passing people and be like, hold on, this fucking Prius is in the way. And he like pulls back and like passes them and revs up his engine and shit. He's like, all right, we'll make this short. I'll make this simple. I sold two companies. I got, I'm driving a fucking Lambo right now. And like all this stuff, I'm 20 whatever years old. And like, honestly, it worked to me on the time. I was like 18. So I was like, whoa, 
this guy like walks on water. Eh, it's good to do, but you kind of look like a douchebag, so. Kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. You are required to work your fucking ass off at this firm. We want winners here, not pikers. A piker walks at the bell. Piker asks how much vacation time you get in the first year. Vacation time? People come and work at this firm for one reason, to become filthy rich. That's it. We're not here to make friends. We're not saving the fucking manatees here, guys. You want vacation time? Go teach third grade public school. Okay. First three months of the firm are as a trainee. <clears throat> you make $150 a week. After you're done training, you take the Series 7. You pass that, you become a junior broker, and you're opening accounts for your team leader. You'll it's a healthy amount of gaslighting, you know. I, I respect it. He, he's basically like scaring off the people that are definitely just not going to make the cut and setting proper expectations because if that's actually how they roll as a company and they actually can make that much money, that's dope. Like it's probably best to be like, hey, you're only going to make this much money. You can make a lot of money if you're willing to get go through the shit. And if you're not willing to go through that shit, there's the door. Like just want to set proper expectations, even though like if you're a killer, you'll make a lot of money here. I like that he's open and honest about that. I think a lot of people will be like, try to dress up the sales job to act like it's not that hard and it's gonna be this amazing thing. You're not gonna to have to do that much and everything's amazing. Then you get into it and you're like, this is not what he said it was. So at least he's being abundantly transparent about that. So when they come in, they know what they signed up for. Respect. In 40 accounts, you start working for yourself. Sky's the limit. Word or two about being a trainee, your friends, your parents, the other brokers, whoever, they're gonna give you shit about it. It's true, $150 a week, not a lot of money, but pay them no mind. You need to learn this business, and this is the time to do it. Once you pass the test, none of that's gonna matter. Your friends are shit. They tell me you made 25 grand last month, they're not gonna fucking believe you. Fuck them, fuck them! Parents don't like the life you lead? Fuck you, mom and dad. See how it feels when you're making their fucking Lexus payments. Now go home and think about it. <laughs> this is like how cults start. <laughs> they like create separation from everyone in their life. So they only focus on the pack, even though there's things that are like not great for them. It's like, if anyone tells you this isn't good, just don't listen to them. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Think about whether or not this is really for you. If you decide it isn't, listen, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not for everyone. <clears throat> Thanks. But if you really want this, you call me on Monday and we'll talk. Just don't waste my fucking time. Oh, he's about to walk out of the room with a fucking baller outro and they're all gonna be like, oh my God, let's see it. Okay, that's it. Oh, I didn't get to see the reaction, damn. All right, that's it for this video. This is definitely more like entertainment kind of reaction video type stuff. This isn't like everything that I do. If you guys check out some of my other videos and subscribe, uh, you'll be able to see more objection handling content, more tactical kind of stuff. So subscribe for that, kind of look for other videos like that. Uh, but that's it for this video. Like I said at the beginning, if you're a sales rep, go to closingwell.com. If you are a business owner that wants to hire sales reps, go to hiresalesrep.io. Man, that's it for this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Yeehaw.